Hello, welcome back to Drinking By Myself. My name is Emma and today I'm going to be doing the Little Less Lonely tag. This was a lovely tag created by my booktube bestie Emma Tobias and I will link to her video below. And basically it's a tag about exploring all of the art forms, books and otherwise that make us feel a little bit less lonely even when the world is kind of shitty. The difficult thing about the books part is that I honestly feel like every book I've ever read has made me feel less lonely. So picking just one is like picking your favourite grain of sand on a beach. But let's give it a go. So the first question is what was a classic that seems to get you? And for that I picked Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. This is one of my all time favourite books but also so is everything that Jane Austen's written. But this one in particular I read it a lot when I was very young and I think a big part of that is that the character of Marianne has been particularly powerful for me growing up. When I was younger I remember really really identifying with Marianne and I thought that, that was a good thing. I thought it made me really romantic and creative and passionate until as I got older I started reading it and realising quite how selfish she was and quite how oblivious she was to Eleanor's own suffering and how even when Eleanor talks to her about her own heartbreak she manages to make it into her own pain and I realised that that also is quite accurate to my personality. I think I am like Marianne. The good stuff and the bad stuff. So yeah, that was a little insight into my angsty personality. That's what's so cool about Jane Austen. She writes these characters and she was writing hundreds of years ago, but she writes people that are so real. We all know somebody like a Jane Austen character. These people could so easily exist today. And Marianne Dashwood does exist today and she's me. The second question is, what was a book that surprised you with how much it affected you? And for that I picked The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I didn't read The Perks of Being a Wallflower until I was probably 19 or 20. I can remember the armchair that I was sitting in, I remember just devouring it and feeling like this is so cliche but this book is changing my life. And in such a surprising way. Weirdly, one of the main things I think of when I remember reading Perks Being a Wallflower is the effect it had on my struggle with religion, which is like not what the book's about. But I'm not a religious person. It was probably when I was like 18, I stopped believing in God and I found it really, really hard. I found it really scary, like it made the world feel really scary and pointless. And then for some reason, reading Perks Being a Wallflower just like put the world back into place for me, which I don't know how to describe because I don't think there's any mention of religion in the book, that's not what it's about, but it just kind of gave me this new perspective. Okay, I can be an atheist and also understand the world as beautiful and rich and full and have my own purpose and my own joy in the world. So that was a book that really surprised me, both with how much it affected me, but also within the specific way that it affected me was very surprising. Okay, question three, what's a book that you read at the exact right time? And for that one, I've picked another Jane Austen. This one is Northanger Abbey. And I read this one, I'd been pacing myself because I loved Jane Jane Austen so much, I knew there were only six books, I didn't want to race through them all. So through all of my teenage years, I read one kind of every few years, so I would always have one left. And I finished, in my last year of university, I read Persuasion, and that was my last one, and I loved it, and it's probably my favourite one. But anyway, Northanger Abbey was the second to last one that I read, and I read it when I was on my gap year in Italy. I ended up having a wonderful time, but when I first got there, I was really, really homesick. I didn't really speak the language, I just felt so far away from home and lost and we didn't have Wi-Fi for the first weekend that I was there so I couldn't talk to anyone in my family and I was just feeling really really miserable but I had Northanger Abbey in my suitcase so I decided that for that weekend I was just gonna shut myself in my room, curl up and read Northanger Abbey. I don't think any book has ever changed my mood to such a dramatic degree. I fell so head over heels in love with it, I completely forgot to be homesick. The weekend flew by and pretty certain I finished this in that weekend but then by Monday I was in such a good mood that I felt more ready to tackle the adventure of being away and after that I absolutely loved the trip. Next question is what's a book that inspires you? And I've talked about this book so much on my channel but I think I'm going to go for Ella Enchanted. That's a book that I've read repeatedly ever since I was about nine years old probably and it has always inspired me. Ella has always been this really inspirational feisty heroine. Even though I didn't understand the book as feminist when I was nine, I think that that really influenced me in the way I saw my own potential. I talk about it too much so I'm not going to talk too much about it but that would be an inspirational book that always makes me feel less lonely, I just adore it. And finally, what is a book that calms you? And for this one, I picked Feeling Sorry for Celia by Jacqueline Moriarty. This is another one that I read a lot as a child. It's a very strange book. I don't even know really how to describe it. It's written all through letters, but these like fictional letters to the main character, Elizabeth, from these like 
societies that she's imagining in her head. So, like, she might imagine a letter being written to her from the Cold Hard Truth Association. And her best friend Celia, who's really mysterious and weird, has gone missing, so she's trying to track her down. It's this really bizarre book that was just my favourite growing up, and whenever I read it, I do just feel calm and safe and at home. It's warm in here. I've taken off my cardigan, now I'm free. So those are some of the books that made me feel a little less lonely, and now I'm gonna move on to the other types of art section. But here's the thing that I found really tricky while I was thinking of some of these, is that in general, the things that I really love tend to make me feel genuinely sad, not happy. I think it's because nostalgia is such a strong emotion for me that whenever I revisit something, it also tends to make me cry hysterically. And not in a like crying because it's so lovely way, in a like genuinely sad crying way. And I have to kind of talk to myself and calm myself down and convince myself that it's okay that time has moved on, that it's okay things are different now, which it is because I genuinely think I get happier as a person every year, my life gets better every year. And yet when I revisit things that remind me of a certain point in my life, I just, I can't cope, I really just cry a lot. And in the end I decided that I actually just can't separate those two emotions. These things do make me feel less lonely, but they do also make me feel a bit sad, and it requires some effort on my end to remind myself that they're happy and not sad. I'm a little odd, but here goes, here are some things that make me happy and tearful. So first, some songs that make me feel a little less alone. And the first one that I would pick for this is Barbara O'Reilly by The Who. This song is so closely tied to one specific memory, which was the first time I heard it. I was in the car with my dad, and he's always loved playing me songs that he liked and pointing to specific moments. It might be a specific drum beat or a specific chord or whatever that he loves, and he'll be like, wait for it, wait for it. And anyway, in particular, it used to be when, as a family, we would order an Indian takeaway. I would go in the car with my dad to pick it up, and he would make me listen to a song. And one time, he made me listen to Barbara O'Reilly. And I can remember the bit he pointed out is the first time it comes in going and I remember feeling like I was in the credits of a movie or something. It felt like such a happy song and it does make me feel less lonely because it reminds me of my family but it also just is a very emotional song. And then on a totally different musical note, pun not intended there, Taylor Swift's early albums really just hold a whole world of feeling less alone in them. As a teenager, those songs just spoke to me in a special way. I have been to see Taylor Swift live twice, both times a lot of crying happened. I must have listened to those early albums a hundred times and they don't hold the same meaning for me these days. I don't relate to those emotions now the way that I did 10 years ago when I was 15, 16, but back then they definitely made me feel less alone. Okay, films. One of the films that will always make me feel less lonely has got to be The Sound of Music, one of my favourite films of all time. I know all of the songs off by heart. I even walked down the aisle at my wedding to one of the songs from Sound of Music. That's how much I love it. But to be honest, I feel like at least half of the movies I've ever seen have been my favourite film of all time. A lot of times someone will mention a film and I'll be like, oh my god, yes, that's my favourite film. Then they'll say another one and I'm like, oh no, no, that's my favourite film. I probably have like 350 favourite films of all time. Apparently I am not picky. And then finally, some TV shows that make me feel a little less alone. And I have two that I thought of. The first one is a really good example of what I was saying before about crying hysterically, and that is The O.C. I used to watch The O.C. with my friends at boarding school. We would watch it after lights out in the dorm. And that's always what I remember whenever I think of it and how much we all loved it. And I genuinely love that show, like with my whole soul, but it will make me cry so much. On one of my last nights of uni, I remember while I was getting ready to go on a night out, I just put on an episode of The OC in the background and I started just crying so much that I couldn't go out. I love those characters so much. I feel so strongly attached to them. It's like they're my friends, but in like a more obsessive way. <laughs> so I think a show that's maybe a little bit safer for me to watch because I don't get quite so emotional is Friends. Friends I grew up watching, it's one of my earliest memories. I remember being allowed to stay up late to watch it at nine o'clock on Friday nights when I was really, really young. We would watch it with my family. I genuinely think it's still one of the funniest sitcoms. So many shows these days have tried to be like it and just haven't done as well. I think it's so funny. It's problematic. I see that now. Looking back on it, it is very much of its time and it does have a lot of problems, but it does make me feel less lonely, partly because it just reminds me of my Friday night tradition with my family. And also I think because I've watched it so many times, I also feel like I know those characters like my own friends, so they make me feel like there's somebody there. 
So that was the Little Less Lonely tag, and thank you so much to Emma Tobias for tagging me in that. That was really good fun to do. And I will write a few names below to tag some people, but also do feel free to do it if you want to, because it's a really nice one to do. And I'd also love to know what the things are that make you feel a little less lonely, so do leave me a comment below and let me know. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for new videos every week. See you next time!